So we need to make two handles you see here. What they are is five rows, okay, five rows of single crochet and then the sixth row what we do is we sandwich it up and single crochet our way all the way across which creates a nice gripping handle which is not too obscene in your hands like it's not too big. So let's uh, begin to do that. So you have to only chain 100. You have to do two of these. I've got them already done but I'll show you how that's done and then we're gonna continue then to sew that to the project. So let's grab our four millimeter size G crochet hook in order to play. So let's get our slip knot ready and let's zoom in and let's get after it. So I want you to chain a total of 100. I'm not gonna do 100 because I've already got it done. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So you're gonna have all the way to 100. I want you to turn it over and get the back hump of the chain and single crochet yourself all the way across. You will have the most perfect edge if you do it all the, all the way like that. The only product that that does not ever work on is Bernat Blanket. When you turn it over to do that it creates a gapping space because the yarn is so thick. But that is my standard technique of turning it over and getting the back chain. And actually I find with myself as a kid is that I can never get that chain to look right and when you go in the back hump just like that it literally creates the most perfect um, um, first row ever and because you never have a row that kind of looks out of place. So that was row number one out of five. Turn your work and now this is two. So chain up one and single crochet yourself all the way across and go right to the very end. So this is row number two. Obviously it will take you longer to get across. You got a hundred stitches. I only have like nine at this time. So how did I know I had nine without really having to count? Well when you crochet a chain and you go second chain from the hook. So if I crochet a 100 and I go second chain from the hook that means I'll have 99 when you have to eliminate one stitch out or one chain. So turn your work. Let's do row number three. And just continuing to go across. I kinda like this um, part of the project itself. You can sit in front of the TV not really have to worry about too much. Um, if you're a person that can watch TV and look away a lot um, the handles are really quite easy to be able to, to master. So we're gonna turn our work and go for row number four. It's almost like a tango isn't it? Do you remember Fred Flintstone doing the tango? I always remember the music from that. Okay so this is uh, row number four that we're about to finish. Turn our work. Go for row number five. So this is the final row. So just continuing to go. So what I want to do then after I get row number five done we want to sandwich this in half and create a tube shape like that. I really don't like crocheting small little mini tubes but I like doing it like this where I can just do my rows back and forth and then fold it. It's a lot easier. It's less headache too. So what I want you to do is sink your hook into the first stitch and then fold it up and get the matching stitch on the other side and pull it together. Get your your straggler and pull it through and then single crochet. So advance one stitch on the one side and advance the next stitch on the other side and put it together. And you're just gonna single crochet yourself all the way down and you're seeing that you're creating a tube like shape by doing so. So please do that all the way down and you can leave an extra long yarn tail at the end of this one because you can use that then to sew it to the project which we'll be doing next. So eventually you get here you can leave an extra long yarn strand and then what we're gonna do is pull down the project again and we're gonna start then marking it out where we want it and then we're going to sew it to the bag itself. So I'm gonna give you some pieces of advice. See how we use brown up here? I would recommend saving a same color that you have out of your Karen cake. So what I have is that I'm almost running out of that brown. So I wanna use that because I wanna sew my handles to this. But if I'm using the wrong color then it's gonna be very obvious. So what I wanna do is that I want to use the same brown that you see here so that when we go through the project and come on this side that you really won't notice it there. So what I want to do is create a, a bit of a yarn strand here and I need a total of four of those and then um, what we're going to do then from that point is that we're gonna mark where we want these on the bag. I'm recommending three and a half inches from the edge in order to um, secure that in and again you can decide what's uh, good for you. I, I find most of the yarn inspirations patterns they always say just kind of look at the photo and, and put it out. But what I like to do for myself is that I like to put down my hand and so use my hand assuming that they're both the same size. I don't know if they are or not but and then I would say okay this is where I want the handle and then I put my hand on the other side and say that's where I want my handle 
and that's where we're gonna go. So when I come back I'm gonna have some stitch markers here and then we're going to show you how to put those on. Okay so let's put on our stitch marker. So here's the base. It's nice and folded in half so make sure this is nice and flat and come to the top. Get four stitch markers and you can either do a measurement if you feel more comfortable. I'm gonna use my hand. It's about three and a half inches and I'm going to mark the first stitch like that. Then gonna take the, the stitch marker and pull it through and through and that will mark where one handle is. Then I wanna do the other side too. So just mark it and if you think it's too far apart now's the time to move it before you sew anything together, right? So I'm doing the one side just like this and now what about the other side? So what I would do is flip up the other side and just look straight across to where it is and then get the other one. So why measure twice, right? Sometimes when you measure <laughs> the tape measure lies to you. We all know that's true. I know the weigh scale lies to me all the time. <laughs> so, so here we go and we're marking our stitches. So what we're going to do is that I'm going to show you how to attach a strap and then what you wanna do is you wanna flip this up forward and attach your strap looking at it from this perspective. You're gonna trap, uh, put your strap on and then you're going to turn it over and then attach the other strap to the other location that you see. Because you've now got your stitch markers in, you're, you're comfortable to, with being able to flip it up either way. So let's attach our handle. So you'll notice that the single crochet ridge is right here. So you want to lay it down and I would go about an inch. My thumb is about an inch. I used to take engineering in um, college and they would tell you to measure some body parts so that you have a, <laughs> so you have a measurement. So I know my, my thumb one section is an inch. So um, there we go. So I wanna lay it down and I want to have it come up and over so that it's not twisting in any weird way and then the other side is gonna come down on the other side here. But I'm only gonna concentrate on the one side. I'm gonna get my yarn strand ready and then I'm going to show you how to attach. Okay so we're gonna just take a measurement and now if you kinda look at it, if you kinda follow it, you can see that there's three rounds here of single crochets. I'm gonna go down to where I attached it here. So I'm going to go, I'm using the same color that you have and I'm gonna go in the outside and I'm just gonna do the slip knot here and I'm gonna come back and I'm just gonna loop that stitch, that, that uh, slip knot over it so that it will lock it into position like that. So now what I'm gonna do is rotate around. So I'm gonna go up and then over, down and then back across and then attach in the middle. And so it's just a, a great way of doing it. Now let's turn it over and see if this is really that obvious in the back. See, it's not. So if you use the same kind of color it works out uh, really great for you. You can take off that stitch marker at any time. So what I want you to do is uh, just fasten this on. You're gonna do the same thing with all four of them uh, of the straps and what I'll do is that I'll meet you at the end of attaching the strap. So now that I've attached it what I want to do is just kind of have a little tie on the other side. So on the back side of it here. That's why I'm having you look at this side. It's more important to secure everything in and then just like I showed you before back and forth a total of three times. So one, two, and three and what I would do after you get this one in just refeed this starting strand here on it and just drag it through and so that it can be really well hidden and then what you're going to do is you're gonna do the same thing. So follow the strap, make sure it's not twisted at all and then attach it to the other side. Once you get that done, flip the bag over and then access this, this one's here and attach. So I'm gonna leave that with you. I'm gonna throw this through a darning needle now and then I will see you at the end.